In this video, you'll learn the easiest way to run backing tracks in Main Stage 3 using the playback plugin. Hey everyone, I'm David from Sunday Sounds, where we believe in making software like Main Stage 3 fun and easy to use for worship musicians like yourself. In today's video, you're going to learn how to set up simple backing tracks in Main Stage 3. Some folks think that this isn't possible, and a few years ago, it wasn't the most reliable, but the developers at Apple have invested a lot of time into improving the way that backing tracks run inside of MainStage, and I've gotta say that the results are really great if you know how to set it up. So for this tutorial, we're gonna be working with a single stereo backing track, and this is something that I've built here in Logic. I'll let you listen to just a little bit of it. Everybody stay out. And it's got some guide in there, panned hard left, and then all of the stems are panned hard right. So I say stereo file, and that's true, but all of the keys and synth and drum parts are panned hard right, and the guide track is panned hard left, and I'll talk a little bit about why that is later on in this video. You could do a stereo file here, a true stereo file if you wanted as well. You're just going to be limited by the number of outputs on your audio interface. So uh, wherever you're getting your backing tracks from, if you're making them yourself, if you're downloading them from somewhere online, you want to make sure that you bounce them out of Logic Pro. And the reason that you need to do this is because MainStage can receive tempo information from audio files that are bounced out of Logic. If you do this in Pro Tools or in Ableton, then you won't be able to sync up the audio file in the way that you would like. So when you run it in main stage and you have main stage's clock running, you'll run into some frustrating issues with things getting out of sync. So to do that, load in your stems, mix them however you'd like, pan them however you'd like, and then when you've got your file ready, just click on File, go down to Bounce, Project, and then you want to make sure that you use the file format AIFF. This is a high quality pretty large file size, but it's very easy for MainStage to read this file quickly as it streams it from your hard disk during a performance. Don't use an MP3 or a WAV file because you won't be able to sync them up to MainStage's clock. So once you've got your bounce settings set up, just hit OK to save the file wherever you'd like on your computer. I'm going to minimize logic now, and I've got the track file here on my desktop. So now I'm going to open up my MainStage concert. And you can do this in any Main Stage 3 concert. I have our Sunday Keys template for Main Stage open. So to start off with, we're gonna do this on a blank patch. Now, if you wanted to do this alongside of your Keys patches, then you would just add what we're about to add to your existing Keys patches. We're gonna hit the plus button here. And then we're gonna insert a software instrument channel strip. Now with the software channel strip loaded, we're gonna click on the input area and choose a stereo instance of the playback plugin. Now this is what MainStage uses to play backing tracks in MainStage in real time. And this is what the plugin looks like with no file loaded. So we're just gonna double click where it says none there, and then we're gonna have the opportunity to locate the file that we wanna load in. So I'm here at my desktop, and I'm gonna choose this .aiff file. And note the file size, it's almost 100 megabytes. It's about six minutes long. It's way bigger than an MP3, but trust me, this works really well inside a main stage. Don't be scared of that larger file size. So go ahead and click open. And when you do, it will load in. You'll actually see the waveform right away inside of the playback plugin. So I can click the play button here. One. And it will start two. playing back. Intro. And the two, panning that I put three, in this track in four, Logic is four, automatically gonna be present in the audio file when it's open in main stage. So keys and all that stuff is hard right, and the guide track is hard left. Now, there's a few things that you need to do to make sure that your playback track syncs up with the patch and with main stage's global clock. First off, we need to click the patch here in the patch list, and down in the attributes tab, check the has time signature box and make sure that it matches the time signature of the track you're using. Then do the same with the change tempo two box. This track was bounced at 146 BPM. So I wanna make sure that the BPM of the patch that the track is loaded into is the same as the original tempo of the track. And I'll explain why in just a second. Next, we need to change the sync setting to on. 
so that it actually syncs the audio file up with main stage and then change snap to to bar. Now, when we start the track, it will be in sync with main stage's clock. So let me demonstrate this for you by running main stage's metronome. And then when I hit the play button here, it's automatically gonna start on the next downbeat. One. Two. So now if you have any time synced keys parts, they're going to be perfectly in sync with main stage's clock, with the metronome, and with the track. Up here, if you click on the settings cog and then hover over flex mode, there's a few different options here. I recommend that you select polyphonic. Flex mode allows you to actually change the tempo of the track in real time, so it's locked to main stage's global clock. So this would allow us to change the tempo Let's say we needed to play it at 150. One. And you're actually two, able to warp the intro, audio of the two, backing track three, up or four. down with minimal artifacts. So you can hear that that actually sounds really good. Folks wouldn't be able to tell in live environment that it was warped at all. So you can change the tempo up or down. You can even do this in real time if your band happens to nudge the tempo up or down and you're trying to keep up. You can use tap tempo to warp it in real time as well. Now, I don't recommend that you warp more than five or 10 BPM up or down. After that, you're really gonna start to notice the stretching or the shifting of the audio file and it's not gonna sound nearly as good as the original. But if you have that flex mode set to polyphonic, then you can make minor adjustments if it just feels a little fast or feels a little slow on Sunday morning and you can adjust that just by changing the tempo of the patch. Next in the settings cog, you have a couple options for how you might be able to start this backing track inside a main stage. You can check this box to start on patch change if you'd like the backing track to automatically start when that patch is selected. So here I can change to this patch, one, and then the two, track will automatically start playing. Intro. This is really useful at times if you know where your transitions are and you need to change to a new keys patch for the entire song and you want that track to automatically start playing. Uh, it's something I use all the time when I am running backing tracks in main stage. And then you also have this option to start with the play action. Now, don't be confused. This is not the play button inside of playback, but rather main stage's global play function that's here in the top right corner. So with this option selected, if I hit the green One, play button there, then the track two. will automatically start playing. Intro. Now, with these automatic start actions, I do recommend that you get familiar with the way that Mainstage's clock works and figure out how you want to transition in your live keys playing or guitar playing along with the tracks. Um, for example, if you, whenever you turn on Mainstage's global clock, it automatically kills and resets all MIDI and audio. So you want to make sure that if you're playing a different patch, that you already have that clock running so that if you have the setting to start on patch change, and then you select that patch, One, you don't lose all of two. your existing audio. Uh, otherwise, that's gonna make for a really jarring transition. Every time you start a track, there's gonna be a total break in all the audio output, and you'll have to replay all of those notes for them to come back in. So if you want to be able to change to a patch and have the track automatically start, that's great, but make sure that main stage's clock is already running. Now, if you want to manually turn this track on, you can do that. Just add a button to your workspace, like this one, and then hit Map Parameter and map it directly one, to that button. Two. Inch. Now I can use this button on my Nano Control to toggle the track on and off with something tactile that I can actually touch during a live performance. And if you go into the playback plugin here in the Mappings tab, there's all sorts of really cool stuff that you can do within the plugin uh, related to transport, like how you play it. You can jump around in the arrangement. You can trigger a fade out. You can even pitch shift the track up or down. And it's a little bit outside the scope of this tutorial, but feel free to explore all the options for mappings inside of the playback plugin. And you can read Mainstage's included help documentation on using playback to see everything that it can do for you. Now, the thing we haven't talked about yet is how you are gonna get the audio from playback to the soundboard because it's likely that you don't want your live keys parts or your guitar parts 
and the guide track and the metronome and the track all going out the same outputs on your computer. So you're gonna need an audio interface or uh, an aggregate uh, device with multiple audio interfaces that give you at least three or four audio outs. So right now we've got the track coming out output one and two, and the metronome is coming out there as well. If I had a four output audio interface connected, I could just control click on the output area and change the output to output three and four so that the folks in front of house wouldn't actually hear uh, the click and the track and the guide. They would just hear the keys coming out output one and two. And then you can pan things however you'd like. If you want the metronome to be in sync with the guide, then you pan it hard left so that it's guide on output three along with a click and then all of your audio on output four. Now, if you're comfortable with this and you know the way that you want to route audio out to your soundboard, then you can add as many outputs as you have available on your audio interface. So you could bounce out multiple stereo tracks, one including your keys, one with guitars, one with background vocals, and you could send them out as many different outputs as you'd like, just like you would do if you did the same type of setup in Ableton Live. You're really only limited by your comfort level and the physical outs on your audio interface or audio interfaces. Now, one little trick that I'll share here that is how I like to bounce out my stereo tracks that include a guide. I like to include the guide track really, really hot, panned hard left, like just below the point of clipping, um, so that it's really loud by default. Uh, and this is because it gives me more control over how loud the guide is being sent to the soundboard. So what I mean is that if the guide is too loud and we want less of it, all we have to do is actually pan a little bit away from the left side of this channel strip. And as we do that, the guide will get quieter and quieter. So it just gives you a little bit of an extra bit of control over the volume of that guide track so that if the guide is uh, not loud enough or too loud on a Sunday morning, you don't have to bounce out that entire track again. So this is something that I like to do, especially when I'm running just one single backing track file with a guide baked in. I'll just make the volume really loud just below clipping so that I have that extra little bit of control. Now, if you know you wanna run tracks in main stage, but you need a little more control, make sure you check out our done for you resource, Live Tracks. This brand new expansion for Sunday Keys for Mainstage gives you complete control of up to 16 simultaneous backing tracks running in perfect sync. Dial in your perfect backing track mix, mixing down tracks you don't need, and enjoy flexible live playback with the ability to loop sections, dynamically jump around the arrangement on the fly, and to smoothly fade out the song at the touch of a button. Additional features make it easy to change the key or tempo of your tracks at will, and you'll find that routing audio to suit your specific needs is simple as well. Live Tracks enhances your existing Sunday Keys setup without compromising any of the features you love. Take full advantage of all your Keys patches, the Tonic Pad Generator, and even the Live Mixer and Worship Beats expansion packs right alongside of Live Tracks without skipping a beat. And since Live Tracks operates at the set level in main stage, you can even cycle through multiple keys patches while running a single set of backing tracks at the same time. Live tracks for Sunday keys, the simple and elegant way to run backing tracks in main stage.